We expect it to arrive maybe once every uh, several millennia or a ten, tenths of millennia. And the fact that we saw it over the past decade is really surprising. 3i Atlas is arriving at Mars. Not a forecast, a fact. The object is sweeping into the red planet's neighborhood with a coma that keeps swelling and a tail that, under the right angle, points the wrong way. Orbiters around Mars are already pivoting. Spectrometers are being retuned. Cameras are waiting for a sky that's about to ignite. JWST is locked on the infrared trail. Hubble is tracing the halo. And yet, the silence is louder than the signal. No global countdown. No plain English briefing. Just fragments, preprints, leaked plots, stray conference slides, confirming the trajectory and hinting at implications no one wants to say out loud. Why now, when something from another star is about to pass closer to a neighbor than any visitor of its kind, do we hear almost nothing? This isn't a casual flyby. The approach is tight, the timing surgical. As 3i Atlas threads toward Mars, its path hugs the solar plane within a whisper, about five degrees off the sheet where planets keep their orbits. That's the corridor engineers prefer when they sling probes across the inner system. Here, it looks like an interstellar traveler choosing our lanes. Coincidence is the reasonable answer. It's also the least satisfying, because from Mars, the instruments are not hunting for a pretty picture. They're hunting for anomalies. The trace gas orbiter is tuning to CO2, CO, diatomic carbon, and organics. Mars Express is ready to sniff water ice and odd isotopes. Data will flow from orbit to Earth with delay and filtering, not because of secrecy, but because of geometry and that geometry is about to get cruel. In days, the sun steals our line of sight. Earth goes into a blackout for the most volatile part of the encounter. Solar glare will drown our biggest mirrors. From our vantage, 3i Atlas becomes a rumor threaded through brightness. Soho and stereo will still catch ghosts, a tail curving, a bloom at perihelion, a streak that flares or breaks. Mars won't blink. Its orbiters will keep watching, relaying what they can, when they can. The moment we're most likely to see extreme behavior is the moment we're least able to stare at it from home. That's not a plot twist. It's bad timing that feels intentional. Meanwhile, the numbers that have slipped through do not soothe. Brightness climbed before it should have, long before the classic frost line. Then it stalled. Then it surged again. The light curve reads like a pulse, not a ramp. CO2 around the coma spiked and dipped. Dust grains look heavier than fluff, slower to disperse, clustering along the plane in a way that can forge an inward-pointing spine, the notorious anti-tail that shocks the eye before geometry calms it down. Hubble's coma measurements have flagged a mismatch. The dust output suggests a bigger engine than early nucleus estimates admit. Either the core hides more bulk or pockets under its skin are overachieving. None of that is normal. None of that is tidy. And then there's the pattern everyone pretends not to see. 3i Atlas doesn't wander, it threads a near-linear sequence across the inner system. Flybys that look timed, not tossed. The corridor mirrors routes we map for missions. Some call that suspicious. Others call it selection bias. A few whisper a third word, designed. A Harvard astrophysicist who once argued Oumuamua might have been more than a rock is now pointing at 3i Atlas, citing the low inclination, the tidy arc, even an apparent retrograde segment, and urging agencies to redirect what they can. His loudest ask, swing Juno. The answer so far is silence. Mars doesn't need opinions. It needs spectra. TGO's instruments are poised to catch the breath of the object. CO2, CO, C2, maybe a hint of more complex carbon chains if activity pops. Mars Express will search for water and strange ratios that betray where a traveler formed. JWST watches deep teasing out the fingerprints of silicates and organics that should have broken down ages ago if they weren't shielded in the dark. If the chemistry looks too pristine, models will squirm. If the light curve keeps pulsing, the idea of jets acting like thrusters becomes more than a metaphor. And if the tail keeps misbehaving under specific angles, geometry will explain it, but the impression will stick anyway. That impression is dangerous. It's also irresistible, but that wasn't the whole story. The approach to Mars is the first reveal. Orbiters have adjusted schedules to maximize the pass. TGO can stare along the limb and pick up faint gas bands at insane sensitivity. That's where CO2 spikes and diatomic carbon glow even when the coma looks weak. Mars Express can map the dust distribution and watch for shifts that scream fragmentation. 
before anyone else says the word. If the nucleus vents in bursts, the timing of those bursts will line up with rotation, giving us a spin rate from a heartbeat-like light curve. If jets act like tiny engines, the track will pick up a non-gravitational nudge, a whisper of thrust etched into the arc. Small nudges matter. They can change everything we think we know about the core's shape, spin, and strength. And yet, timing bites. As 3i Atlas nears the red planet, Earth slides toward invisibility behind the sun. No clean live feed, no minute-by-minute -minute thread, only partial relays and solar monitors catching splinters. That's when stories metastasize. It happened with Oumuamua, when a non-gravitational push with no visible outgassing sent models scrambling. Hydrogen ice was proposed, nitrogen sheets, fluffy fractals, solar sail speculations. With 3i Atlas, the stack is different, but the feeling rhymes. Early ignition, low angle, anti-tail illusions, a mass-to-dust mismatch, a heartbeat light curve, and a pass by our most instrumented neighbor right as we lose our best eyes. If you wanted the internet to melt, you would pick this moment. And we didn't pick it, the sky did. Let's talk tail. Most comets grow tails that swing away from the sun, dust traced by radiation pressure into elegant arcs. But under near coplanar geometry, heavy grains stack along the orbital plane and throw a spear inward. It looks like defiance, it's perspective. Add heavier particles and you lengthen the illusion. That's the anti-tail, a trick the sky plays on viewers when the angle is just right. But the illusion doesn't explain a pulsing brightness, a compositional mix that feels too fresh, or an orbit that glides where our probes glide. Those need their own lines on the chalkboard. Another itch, the nucleus size. Early models put it small. The dust output says, think bigger, or think busier. If it's bigger, we misread the core. If it's busier, internal heat pockets or a layered chemical stew might be driving episodic outbursts. Sunlight cracking caps, exposing volatiles, then resealing as shadows and rotation shift the heat. Each opening and closing would stamp the light curve with a cadence. Each burst would paint the coma with a different blend. CO, then CO2, then hints of complex carbon chains that whisper organic, without the comfort of an easy label. If those shifts line up with Mars's pass, the orbiters will catch them. If they peak during Earth's blackout, we'll read them secondhand. Either way, the signature remains. Perihelion is the crucible. October 31st, a silence wrapped in fire. Temperatures soar, dust evaporates, ice flashes to gas, weak seams unzip. Some comets disintegrate like chalk in storm surf. Others flare, shed a shell, and keep their core. A few skate through nearly unchanged, as if they were built for it. If 3i Atlas shatters, the fragments will sketch the architecture, single block or contact binary, porous rubble or hardened rind. If it flares without failing, vents and shoots may open. New chemistry, new dust, new light curve. If it shrugs, then resilience is the headline, and everything we thought we knew about its structure resets. And what happens next would shock everyone, because Earth will be blind at exactly the moment the true behavior emerges. Soho and Stereo can still see through the glare. They've watched a parade of sun grazers die, and a rare survivor thread the gauntlet. They know what to look for, a sudden bloom, a fading streak, a split that forks like a wishbone. From Mars, the spectrometers will read the gases as they evolve. Water, CO2, CO, C2. Each line a note, together, a chord. The cadence of those notes can reveal layers, what sits shallow, what lies deep, what only wakes under pain. A wobble in the track can betray jets pushing. A kink in the coma's edge can betray fractures forming. Tiny tells, huge implications. A call went out to redirect Juno. Bold, impossible, theatrical. Delta V doesn't bargain. Real missions don't pivot on a hunch. Agencies respond with caution because they've worn the burn marks of surprise. So the official tone is muted. Unusual, but natural. A visitor with quirks, not a messenger with intent. That language keeps the floor from cracking. It doesn't stop the ceiling from creaking. Meanwhile, a different kind of intercept is already happening. A fleet of eyes converging. Mars orbiters, Earthside telescopes before the blackout solar monitors during the glare, and then James Webb Space Telescope and Hubble again on the far side. A relay of attention with no central narrator. The question that stalks every frame is the same. Is this just a rowdy comet, or is it something we don't have a box for? The conservative stack says it's natural. Jets can nudge paths, 
Spin can turn bursts into rhythm. Heavy grains can fake wrong way tails. A low plane can be chance. Early ignition can be CO slash CO2. Every piece has precedent, but the arrangement, the Mars pass plus blackout plus heartbeat light curve plus mass dust mismatch plus near coplanar glide feels curated. Curated is not proof. Curated is a dare. Now imagine the alternative people whisper about in side chats. Not a ship, not a pilot, but a process designed to wake under a star and express a pattern. Outgassing as code, chemistry as alphabet, timing as syntax. You wouldn't listen for speeches. You'd measure intervals, ratios, and phase-locked surges. You'd treat the light curve like a paragraph and the spectrum like punctuation. That thought is wild on purpose. Wild expands your search window. But that wasn't the whole story. Pull back to the safer frontier. Suppose this is the most dramatic natural comet we've had the luck to study up close as it brushes past Mars. That isn't a downgrade. It's a windfall. Mars provides a baseline others never had. A nearby lab, a vantage that sees what Earth cannot during blackout. If the object breaks, Mars sees the crumbs first. If it flares, Mars catches the chemistry. If it glides through unchanged, Mars records the discipline of a core that should have failed and didn't. Each path earns the attention it's getting. When the glare lifts and Earth's instruments wake, we'll count outcomes. Brighter, dimmer, gone, split? We'll map the coma and tail again. We'll check whether the orbit kept its line or picked up a kink. We'll look for a new rhythm in the light curve, a new choir in the spectrum. The narrative will settle for a moment, then refuse to sit still, because one mystery closes and others come roaring in behind it. That's not frustration, that's fuel. Maybe it's just a rock, ancient, cold, flung across the dark by a forgotten shove, performing a spectacle of heat and dust because physics leaves it no choice. Maybe the early ignition, the low angle, the anti-tail, the pulse, the silence, all of it, is a genius stack of natural effects lined up by chance, maybe. Or maybe this visitor is a mirror, and the reason it feels deliberate is because we are finally awake enough to notice how often the universe writes in a script we don't yet read. So watch the Mars pass with intent. Watch the drip of spectra. Watch the solar monitors through the glare. Watch the reappearance after perihelion and see what changed. And if the quiet between signals feels like a message, you're not alone. The loudest part of this story may be the space where a statement should be. If that hum gets to you, if the idea of an interstellar traveler brushing past our most watched world while Earth blinks makes your pulse jump, stay close, drop your take. What single sign would convince you it's just a rowdy comet? What would make you say we've never seen anything like this before? Subscribe so you don't miss the moment the blackout breaks. The next ping could be a flare that rewrites the arc, a fracture that confesses the core, or a calm that's stranger than either. And if, in the middle of all this, you feel watched, Remember, every eye we have is pointed at a ghost that wasn't supposed to be here. Of course it feels like it's staring back. The sky doesn't owe us clarity, it owes us wonder. And 3 Eye Atlas just delivered both, wrapped in fire, framed by Mars, and carried on a silence that says more than words ever could.